<clears throat> this is Edgar Acosta. This is Joel Acosta, Cynthia Acosta, and Jesus Acosta. On November 5th, 2021, more than 50,000, mostly young people, attended a two day, what was supposed to be a two-day concert event known as Astroworld, put on by Travis Scott and the other defendants in this case. During the first night of the concert, eight of the concert goers died, and scores of others suffered significant injuries. One of those killed was 21-year-old Axel Acosta. Axel died as a result of a phenomenon known as crowd rush. Crowd rush occurs when you have an extremely large and high density crowd moving in one direction in a confined space. People involved in a crowd rush get carried by a river of people uncontrollably. Importantly, people that have been involved in crowd rush typically do not die from being trampled. They die from what is known as compressive asphyxiation, from the sheer force of all the weight of the bodies being stacked on top of them. This is exactly what happened to Axel. The immense force of the unruly and out of control crowd created by the defendant's gross negligence created such significant pressure onto his body that he could not breathe. The air was literally slowly squeezed out of him, sending his heart into cardiac arrest. When he collapsed, concert goers trying to escape their own suffocation caused by the crowd rush trampled over his body like a piece of trash. When emergency caregivers finally removed Axel from the thick of human mass, he lay lifeless on the wet, littered grass at the edge of the chaos. They worked very hard to restart his heart, but they failed. Axel died on the muddy ground of a concert that he attended for fun. Axel Costa loved rap music, and he loved the lineup that was going to be playing at Astroworld. But that love and that feeling was not mutual. Certainly neither Travis Scott nor his handlers, entourage, managers, agents, hangers-on, promoters, organizers, or sponsors cared enough about Axel to make even a minimal effort to keep him and the others at the concert safe. This concert was intended for young people. We've seen that many of the people who attended were minors. I was thinking last night, my son went to Astro World the first year it was held. Why wasn't my son crushed and killed? Perhaps the only reason was he decided not to go. I want everyone watching to know that this could have been your kid. This could have been your kid. We will be filing a lawsuit on behalf of 35 plaintiffs. That number is growing. Our phone is rang off the hook. I think it's self-evident that this concert was planned incredibly poorly, that no regard was given to the safety of these young people at the concert, that there was no emergency response mechanism in place to help those who were in an extremist situation. There was not enough medical personnel, enough security personnel, and there were more people there than should have been there. The way the concert was set up, planned, organized, and the way things were that were, were handled once there was a problem, it boggles the mind. We'll be filing suit against the Scoremore entities. These were the promoters, management. This is an entity that's been sued multiple times for this very thing. We will be suing Live Nation. Remember, it was Live Nation who in 2011 was sued because a stage collapsed and killed seven people and injured 61 others. 
It was Live Nation who received a $101 million verdict against it for a concert employee being here in Portland. It was Live Nation who in 2013, concert attendees said they were run over, beaten, and assaulted in a stampede. It was Live Nation who put on a really fine concert for a woman who was injured during a mid-show stampede. And let me say to Live Nation, because we were involved in the concert that took place in Las Vegas where the many, many people were hurt and Live Nation relied upon an arbitration clause on the back of a ticket. Do you really intend, do you really intend, do you really believe that you can enforce an arbitration clause against minors, against people killed, against people who are still in the hospital? I think not. The case will also be brought against an entity called Contemporary Services Corp, who provided security. The case will be brought against Harris County Sports and Convention Corporation, the premises owner who worked with NRG, was supposed to provide security and make sure the facility was safe. I want to remind you that this is not the first instance where people were injured at concerts. It's a long history in the United States and in the world where individuals who came to a concert looking to have fun, looking to enjoy themselves, did not leave, or certainly did not leave still alive. One of the experts who's looked at the history of concert goers and the multiple events that have occurred has said the history of how the concerts are handled is a history of disinterest and greed. I think that's what we have here. And let's talk about Jock Webster II, otherwise known as Travis Scott. On August 2nd, 2015, Travis Scott was arrested in Chicago for disorderly conduct after encouraging fans to jump over security barricades during his performance at Lollapalooza. In 2017, Travis Scott was charged with inciting a riot, disorderly conduct, because he encouraged the crowd to bypass security and to bypass on-duty police officers. Let's take a little further look at Travis Scott and his antics. You got sound? This video you see Travis Scott standing on the stage encouraging people to bypass security and to charge the stage. Travis Scott specifically yelled into the crowd asking them to bypass security, bypass the police personnel and, and rush the stage. Next slide, please. video you saw Travis Scott who was crowd surfing. Someone took a shoe. He instructed the crowd to F him up, F him up, F him up to the point the poor person who was being targeted by Travis Scott was had to be carried away 
to escape with his life. Next slide. <laughs> video you see Travis Scott encouraging someone who's standing on the upper levels to jump into the crowd and during that very concert somebody was pushed and was incredibly badly injured because of his conduct. Next slide. Here's a tweet Travis Scott sent out before another concert where he's encouraging people who don't have tickets to crash through the security and come to the concert anyway. Next slide. I'm a strong and we got enough to stretch. November come, won't you pop out at the fest? That's just a small snippet of the video to encourage concert or to attend Astro World. This was video from previous Astro World concerts. It's utter chaos, utter chaos that's encouraged not only by Travis Scott, but by everybody involved in putting the concert on. Next slide. Now, this, was, this tweet was reported, and we haven't been able to confirm, and maybe you can, whether this tweet is legit. But here we have a tweet from the Houston Police Department where they acknowledge that the security at Astro World concert was insufficient. And you'll also notice, if you go back and you look at Chief Finner, some of the things that he put out in some of the interviews, where he talks about how many people he was going to have engaged in assisting with security at Astro World and how that number changed based on when he was interviewed. I encourage you to look at that. And we also know that it's been reported by the New York Times that allegedly, our police chief met with Travis Scott or Travis Scott's people indicating concern about some of the things that have been said and things that have been done leading up to the concert. Next slide. And we know... <laughs> gates were opened in the early afternoon of November 5th. That was the scene. Next slide. I ask you, does that look safe? Does that look organized, well run? Does that look like somebody took the time, effort, and energy to properly plan a concert to keep the individuals who pay their money and attend safe? Or does that look like utter chaos? And if it was like that in the early afternoon, imagine what it must have been like at 9 or 10 o'clock at night. We've had repeated reports, more than 30 different witnesses who have who have provided statements saying that the, the, the screening was non-existent, that there was no COVID screening, there was no security screening, that people were just being let in, bags weren't checked, people were smoking weed rampant throughout the concert, and that people were taking drugs. There was no management of that event whatsoever. It was pure and utter chaos. And had they told the people attending that that was going to be what it was like, most of them would not have attended. All over the internet we see on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and other social media sites, the utter chaos that existed on that night. We see Travis Scott continuing to perform while EMTs and other first responders are trying to save people's lives. We know specifically with regard to Axel Acosta, 
We know that the individuals trying to save his life did not have what they needed to save that young man's life. There weren't enough people to help him. There weren't, they did not have the right equipment. He did not need to die. I'm not going to show all the various video that we've collected. It's all over the internet, but no one who sees that video would have wanted to be at that concert had they known that was what it was going to be like. And that brings me to Axel Acosta. <clears throat> he had just turned 21. He was incredibly good at computers. He had just transferred to a new university. He was going to school with his brother Joel. He comes from an extremely close family. His grandmother and grandfather are devastated, just as is his uncle and aunt, brother and father. This was needless. It was unnecessary and could have easily been prevented. We expect to file a lawsuit either today or tomorrow or the next couple of days. We want to make sure we get it right. We want to make sure that everybody is included that needs to be included. In this lawsuit, we intend to change the way Concerts are put on, organized, promoted, and managed in the United States and in the world. So our goal is to make sure that this good, decent, solid young man did not die for nothing. I'm going to give you a couple of questions with Edgar. I told him that, I mean, as you can imagine, this is crushing for him. He has an appointment this afternoon with the funeral home to make arrangements so his son can go back home. Pues me siento devastado por la pérdida de mi hijo. Pero como dice el abogado, Esperemos que, que su vida cambie las cosas de cómo se hacen esos eventos. Porque él vino a tener un rato agradable. Tenía todas sus cosas preparadas para su regreso. Muy responsable en la escuela. Este... Y una cosa por negligencia de alguien que pasen estas cosas. Porque todos los que hayan venido vinieron a divertirse. We're going to take two more questions. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Costa, we just wanted to know, how did you learn about your son's passing? We understand that it took some time for him to be identified. Uh, yes, it took some time because I was, as soon as we received the news, I was trying to get hold of him. I called to his hotel. They tell me that they, he didn't spend the night. That's why I started calling the sheriff's office. The, the reunification and they told me Mr. Acosta, your son is not on the list uh, so you don't have to worry about anything he is not on the list from the dead people or injured people and I told them well he didn't spend the night on his hotel so I'm worried about him and then my son he found his Phone in the last and found, right? And so we tried to call again and ask for him for the body without identification. We called the hospital, we called the sheriff's office, and they tell me no, 
we have all the names on the list, and he is not on the list. Mr. Acosta, could you please uh, tell us? You know, no, just a minute. You, okay. I want to make sh make sure we're clear about something. Um, when the Acosta family, uh, when the their son's his son's name was not on the list, uh, he also inquired, "Well, are, are there any anybody who is unidentified?" Because um, they figured out that Axel's phone was in Lost and Found. And Axel was not the kind of young man that didn't answer his phone or did not stay in touch with his brother or his dad. He stayed in touch with his brother and father. Um, so they knew something was up when they found out that he did not spend the night in the hotel. That is absolutely not like Axel. That's not like Axel. He does not drink. He does not do drugs. He does not stay out all hours of the night. So when they inquired, well, are there any... Uh, has anybody been recovered that you don't know who they are? And he was told no, that there wasn't. And it was only until they found the picture going around on the internet that they realized that a member of their family had died. But it wasn't just the fact that his son had died and his brother had died, but it was the way they found out about it was just horrific. We'll do one more question. Mr. Acosta, could you please tell us, um, first, what do you hope to accomplish with this lawsuit, and uh, you know, what do you want the world to know about your son? Um, I think the, the lawyer already said that we're trying to make things change in this type of events. Because it could, today is me. I lost my son. It could be you, it could be you. When you send your kid to have some fun, and because somebody else is not providing the right I don't know how I can explain it, but the right security, you know, because it's not the first time that he's been in a big event, right? You can go to Disneyland and have fun. You can go to a baseball baseball game and have fun, right? <clears throat> because they have the right security, the right people, uh, some people assisting injuries. Uh, it's hard to explain. But what would you like the world to know about your son? That he was a great kid, excellent student. He was looking for his family. He loves his grandparents. He was trying to study and going to school to be a, he was trying to be a engineer or computer programmer because he want to provide for his family. He really cares about, he was the first grandkid he was the oldest one, and he always take care of his other cousins and nieces. Thank you, guys. Can you say a little bit about him in Spanish? Mm -hmm. Pues quiero que lo como un muy, muy buen Se graduó con los altos GPAs desde la high school, desde la en casi casi viene siendo un estudiante con straight A's. Um, es el primer, fue el primer nieto. Amaba a sus abuelos. Veía por sus primos al ser el, el mayor. 
E un excelente hijo. Thank you. What we're asking for those that watch this interview is if you have information, if you were at the concert and you have key information, or information at least that you believe is key, contact our office. We want to talk to you. Uh, we believe that, that the video on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook uh, is going to be key to this case. And we ask that if you have such video, that you provide it to us. If you have information, provide it to us. We're easy to find. And you should also know that I think as we speak here, there is a hearing going on uh, in court uh, for a temporary restraining order to restrain the various uh, entities that are being sued to preserve all the evidence and to make sure that, that Travis Scott preserve all of the texts and so forth on his telephone or telephones uh, and hopefully uh, we will get that relief that we are seeking. And with that, that is all we're going to do today. Thank you. Is that happening now? It's happening right now. In which court? I think the ancillary judge is Judge uh, Sandhill.